Hey, Mr. Weisberg again. We're going to be going over how to solve question number two from the math one released items. So just like before, go ahead and try it on your own. So pause the video. Once you unpause it, I'll go over a couple different ways to get this question. Okay, method number one, just doing it by hand, getting it solved for Y, getting it in slope intercept form. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. So I'm going to say 2X minus Y equals... Uh, y is less than 4. Now we want to get it solved for y, so we're going to go ahead and um, subtract the 2x from both sides. That's going to give you 4 minus 2x on the right side. The left side is going to be negative y is less than 4 minus 2x. Um, from there, we want to get the y by itself, so we're going to have to divide by negative 1. Yes, that is a little hidden 1 there, so Everything gets divided by negative 1. So both sides are divided by negative 1. The negative 1s will cancel out. And you're going to be left with y. Now, when we do that, you have to realize that anytime you divide a inequality by a negative, or you multiply an inequality by a negative on both sides, you will change the direction of the inequality symbol. So this is less than. But when you do this, it's actually going to turn into greater than. So it's going to flip. It's going to go in the other direction. So y is greater than. Next, when you divide these co these uh, these terms by negative 1, you're actually dividing both of them by negative 1. So 4 divided by negative 1 is actually going to be negative 4. Whereas negative 2x divided by negative 1 is going to be positive 2x. Now we can get that in slope-intercept form. So we'll say y is greater than, and we'll put the 2x first, minus 4. Now, because you do not have a calculator, you'll have to graph these manually. So when you're graphing an equation, y equals 2x minus 4, think of it as slope and y-intercept. That's a terrible line here. Let's make that a little bit better. So we want to get the y-intercept first. So we're going to go down negative 4. Plot that point. And our slope is 2, which means it's a rise 2 over run. goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So we go up 2 over over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, boom, boom, over 1, and so on, and get that little pattern going. This is going to be a dashed line. Why dashed? Well, because it's a greater than. Greater than or less than is going to be dashed, whereas greater than or equal to or less than or equal to would be solid. And dash means it does not contain, whereas solid means it contains. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle, what to do with the shading. So when you have an inequality, you're going to shade either above or below it. Because this is a greater than, it's going to be above the line. So we're shading everything on this graph above the line. So your picture will look something like this. Obviously, if I had a calculator to use, it would be a little bit prettier, but this is the inactive portion, so I have to make do with what I can with my hand. So y is greater than 2x minus 4 would look like that picture. Now we can reveal our graphs and determine which one's going to make the most sense. So here's choice A. Choice A has a negative slope. It's shaded below. That's no good. Here's choice B. Choice B also has a negative slope while it's shaded above. It's still not correct. C. It looks like it has the same direction, but it's shaded below. So this would be like if you forgot to move the inequality over because you realize dividing by a negative changes the direction. So that's your, that's your trap. And then D is the right answer that matches closely what we drew by hand. So that's method one to do this by hand with a, without, with, by solving it for Y and getting it set up into slope-intercept form. I have another approach. Method two does not require solving for y. It's easier, but in my opinion, but it does require a little bit more thinking. So if you're able to think about this just for a little bit, you can do this. The shaded regions imply that those portions of the shaded region are solutions or part of the solution for the inequality. So let's let's pick a couple, let's pick a point for all graphs. I want to do one one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in that point. 
pick numbers that are easy to plug in. Don't pick like 10 and pick numbers that are relatively uh, easy to do in here. That way, because you don't have a calculator, you can do that math more confidently. So plug in a point. In this case, I'm going to plug in the point 1,1. One, one. Now, when I do that, I'm going to test to see if when I plug in that number, I get a number less than a negative 4. I don't know why I said negative. I get a number less than 4. So I'm going to plug in my x and my y, my 1 and my 1. And what I get is 2 times 1 minus 1. That's 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1. Well, is 1 less than 4? Of course it is. So because 1, le one is less than 4, that makes the point 1, 1 a solution to this inequality. 1, 1 is a solution. Notice it's not the only solution, it's part of the solution set, okay? There are lots of different points that are part of the solution set, but I know one one works. Well, because one one falls in this shaded region, that is a possible solution. So A is possible. B is not possible, B is impossible because this is outside. So is this one. So one one does not make part of the solution sets for B or C. It does, however, make a solution set for D. So once again, it's possible here because that's part of the shaded region. So now we have to determine another point, maybe a point that falls in the shaded region for one of them, but not the other one. So let's look at the point. Um, let's see. How about the point? four, six. Now if I go over here, notice that in one of the graphs, four, six is part of the solution set, while on the other, it's not. So let's go back to our equation and let's plug inequality and let's plug in four, six. So I'm going to erase this here. So we're going to plug in that point, 4, 6. So 2 times 4 minus 6 is less than 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 6 is less than 4. 8 minus 6 is 2. 2 is less than 4. Therefore, 4, 6, because it makes this inequality work, is a solution. 4, 6 is a solution. Now, only one of these graphs has both of those coordinates as solutions. And it's not A. So the answer is going to be D. So that's a method you can use by simply picking points that are common through all the graphs and seeing which ones work. Now, it requires more thinking, but it is less work if you don't feel like solving the inequality by hand. Hopefully that helps. Thank you for watching.